surprisingly, I don't watch more sports anime. Um, the only one I really do watch is Haikyuu, and uh, I did watch this other anime. It was a short one, like uh, later last year, uh, Megalobox. Megalobox. Oh, yeah, the boxing one. Yeah, yeah. So it was basically. Bro, Hajime no Ippo is one of the greatest animes ever, bro. And it's just boxing. It's actual boxing. Like. Yeah, yeah. He has a. Yeah, oh. I see. I've seen that anime. It has like a the the dude was a fisher. He was like a fisherman. Hajime no Ippo. His back is big as shit. He does like the. <laughs> boop, boop, boop. I'm about to pull this shit up. Hold up. Watch out reminds, stream. Who's the who's the boxer from uh, Smash Brothers that was in like all the punch outs? Oh also? yeah, yeah, the punch out guy. It's like Lil Mac. <laughs> Lil Mac. <laughs> you know what it is? It's Lil Mac. Yeah, Hajime no Ippo, like, highlights are some of the coolest things to watch. But yeah, Haikyuu is definitely up there. Um, there's just some of those anime that really touch you in the sweet spot and, like, make you emotional, and that's definitely one of them. Yeah, yeah. It, again, I, I, it, I feel like what people don't understand is anime is all about timing, the same way music is just very much about timing, because, and so is comedy comedy and horror are like distant cousins because it's all about the timing of whatever you're trying to execute like if you hit those notes of just the difficulty oh and the thing about haiku bro is i feel like they do a really good job of not doing what's super predictable mm -hmm. like i feel like when they first lost in 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 haiku i didn't think they were gonna lose i thought it was gonna be one of the scenes where they just let them win continue on and shit now nah, they lost they yeah. like got smacked <laughs> like and they were sad as fuck sad as fuck and then they went train like once this season comes back i'm real curious to see what's gonna happen once they go against this new school with the twins and everything like that like are they gonna survive that are they gonna take another hit there because the guys are 30 years now most of them daichi tanaka Asahi and the setter they're all 30 years now so it's yeah. like what are you really gonna do with your cast you know what I mean that that plays a big part in a lot of this stuff too um and last on my list Trigun um Ooh, bringing it back are we I have to include Trigun um because what I when I was thinking about this list, I was thinking about replay value and how many times I've actually just throughout time gone back and have felt that urge to kind of reintroduce myself to the anime cuz over time you do forget shit. You know what I mean? So it always feel nice to go back and Trigun's one of the ones I've gone back to cuz it's again, it's another 24 25 episode, maybe 50. It's hard to remember, but it's no more than that and it's just the the value of the action the comedy the pacing of the the sad moments and then even just the soundtrack of the anime was good you know a lot of those older animes just have an attention to detail that's not as much there anymore mm -hmm. um like if you think about like a cowboy bebop or even ghost in the shell as weird as that was like it just hit certain notes that certain anim you know animes don't do too much anymore definitely definitely cowboy bebop that, that was like another one that popped up and americans were just like oh this is dope he's like a, a japanese han solo he's just up on an adventure and uh, mm -hmm. the voice actor who played him in the dubbed uh versions really I guess resonated with everybody who was here but yeah definitely cowboy bebop has replay value and it definitely hit all the boxes when it comes to like that era of anime as well mm -hmm. as uh yeah the music was so like funky and it was cool and fighting sequences it just all meshed well yeah as like, well uh, samurai was, oh my god it's another one i those niche kind of animes fully coolie there's so many weird little and the Fooly Cooly is like a 12 episode anime that literally just broke the internet at certain times. Like, it's so wild because it was just, it's so drastic from the norm. We're getting slapped in the head with a guitar and grows a robot out of your face and weird shit. Like, what is happening right now? 
That's very true. But it, then again, that's why I love anime because it could, it could just pull shit out like that. You know what's the closest thing that's not an anime technically to like Americans is like uh uh freaking Rick and Morty. Oh yeah. You you give Rick and Morty in like a more Japanese art style, that's an anime. <laughs> it's just yeah, I would even say Adventure Time. Give it the yeah. right type of. Basically, Nickelodeon is like mastering like American anime. Yeah. All right, I just pulled up a video. Do you see the video I just pulled up? For some reason, you automatically joined in. I think. Yeah, yeah, I automatically joined in. Infusion fan subs. Yeah, yeah. Check this shit out. Ooh, ripped. And it's probably some of the older. Oh my god, Hunter x Hunter. I'm looking at fight like Hunter x Hunter fight scenes in the bottom right there. Oh my god. Dude. And this is the older art of it. The newer art is crisp, like how One Piece transition, like the nice thick blacker lines and then the nice cell shading. But I like this art style. Yeah, it keeps it. It just, you know, it refines, it makes it better over time. Yeah. Is there anything that reminds me of like Akira? Like, bro. Again, the thing is, those kind Akira is like one of the best anime movies ever. Now uh, we can go into Studio Ghibli, Ghibli you know, all that. Like, it's just so much good content that comes from the, the East, dude. Yeah, man. I'm trying to. I'm trying. To, yo, the thing is, the way they make the punches impact in this anime, like, I feel like it's like it's what it, I'd imagine getting hit by Mike Tyson might feel like. <laughs> like, look at this, bro. He charged it up. Damn, bro, I just want to punch something right Yeah, I know, right? This is one of those animes that gets you riled the fuck up. Hey, hype as fuck. It's about to do some push ups after this stream. He looked ugly as shit, though, especially getting beat in the face like that, but like. A little bit. Oh. You hear that jet engine? My god, yeah, and his calves. <laughs> oh, I thought it was gonna go be like JoJo the woo 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 JoJo JoJo's one of those animes I just can't really Ooh That rib shot. I just can't really get into it like I want. Oh my god, he just used the after image. Mm. Sure you can. This is what I imagine getting hit by Mike Tyson does feel like, though. Probably. Especially now, man. He's shredded. Bro, you see those clips of him training? I want to talk about that, actually, to be real. Look, look. Gah, gah, oh. gah, gah. Yeah. Just looking at this makes me think all athletes aren't getting paid enough. No, they're so. not. I can tell you that right now. Some, yeah, like um, golf, a hundred percent. Baseball, yeah. Uh, basketball, maybe not. Football, definitely not. Um, God. Hockey, probably not. Like, if there's contact in the sport, I don't think they're getting paid enough. Yeah, seriously. Boxing and MMA, a hundred percent not getting paid enough. Like. Yeah years of your life every fight not even just every fight every every training i feel like every camp yeah they lose years of their life up until the fight where they lose a couple more years like conor yeah. mcgregor is our age bro and he looks tired dog yeah it definitely takes a toll on your body man that's a that's a lifestyle. You can't just do this shit on the side. And the fact that you could get concussions even before you get into the fight is is wild. It's it's insane, man. People can lose their career just training for something that they're gonna go to war like in the next couple weeks to like, you know, like that's that's wild. That's why I can never be a fighter. I'm a lover, not a fighter. 
All right, so I don't know if this video is gonna have audio of someone else talking shit or whatever over it, but I do want to just highlight um, a, a living goat. Uh, we could give him his roses. You know, I, I'm not ashamed of appreciating people who've done great things, and Mike Tyson's probably one of the greatest people to still be walking on the planet. <laughs> um, as far as just his achievements, his I'm loving how I just want to highlight. I'm loving how this party thing is just automatically like it seems to be sinking everything. Sinking. I'm at Did it just jump back for you? Uh, I think so. I'm at 10 seconds, though. Oh, wait, it just. Yeah, I'm at three seconds. Now. Perfect. I'm going to hit play. Let me know if it's running. Oh, yeah. It's running. Oh, my God. These punches. And that's him that's him before working out because he got the gut still yeah yeah this was him someone just asked him a question and he like i'm pretty sure the dude he was talking to and i paused it i don't know if yours paused that, must pause. that was literally because i seen a little bit of an extended version of this one a while back that was literally a guy was like hey you know i'm training right now and it's like Every time I, I get, fa you know, basically telling Mike, every time this happens, I, I get jammed up. And then that's when Mike was like, all right, all right. You got, and then basically started going to school on this guy. But my thing is, even him out of shape, because my dad used to box, so I kind of understand some of this stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, even him out of shape, look how compact he is, like his frame, like, you know, his framing. He is still a fuck like he is still a fighter, bro. His framing, how tight he's keeping everything, even with him, he's still his hands stay by his face no matter what. Even even here, like yeah, he still got the instincts for sure. Damn it! Oh man, it's, he's gotta be. He's still gotta be such a scary guy because he wants another fight. He wants to fight now. That's what all this training is about. He's. Did you see the comment he made? Um, it's it was the, one, the gods of war. Yes, uh, bro. <laughs> my O type shit. I was just like, what? He's talking to John. Who, that's not John Jones. Who's this? Oh, I thought that was Michael J. White. Michael J. White. I can't. Not, get, I need to. I need to see the front. I can't see the. Front. Nah, that's that's not him. He got like a longer beard. Michael J. White's head is a little rounder, I think, too. Like, he, a little more. Oh, I know him. That's Francis Ngannou. Yeah, He's... that's Francis. Yeah, I know him, too. Wait, man. He whiffed, though. He whiffed a little bit in his in his career. What, what, what was it? He went down in the fight against... Um... He, he was in a spree until he lost to Stipe. Which Stipe, yes, bro. Stipe humbled his ass. The thing and about Stipe is I just give him kudos because he's even he was even on ads for like first responders and shit for yeah, fucking he's a, yeah, he's a fucking firefighter. It's like how how much of a great guy do you have to be? He's a poster boy. Yeah, man. With he's a little spice. All American. I want to see Mike fight because as much as it's cool to see him just like show people and i know he can still murk somebody i just want to see his hands connect on someone and i want to see that look you get when connor hits people that they just their opinions change yeah you know but what I, I mean i think it was tyson who said it himself like everyone has a game plan until you get punched in the face right and then they're like oh oh shit. yep yep i mean i'm I'm excited for him too. The only thing is, like, you can't train. I feel like you can't train your chin. So, like, once you reach your prime age of fighting and you try to come back, your body could be on point, but your chin's not going to be there. Bro, did you see how thick his neck looks right now? Yeah, that's his neck. I'm sure his chin ain't going to have no problems. <laughs> I mean, because he got knocked out, like, a couple times in his prime. I mean, I, I don't know the exact number, but at least once I know for sure he got knocked out. I think and that was his prime. So if he's trying to fight these youngins, who knows what will happen to him? I'm not saying that he's going to fold, but that's definitely a factor. 
Oh my god, I don't even this this is a nice clip title. Mike Tyson reacts to Wilder trash talking on IG Live. You might hit hard, but you're not the champ. Ooh. Mike Tyson used his intimidating Oh my god. What's up? You clicked this one right here? Uh I, I didn't click this one. What? They started playing a video. What the fuck? Yeah, I'm not playing anything. It's just showing this colossal man. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't know what that deer was. I didn't click this video though. This is happening. I'm oh scared. my god. He went. My thing is, like, okay. Let me see the. I'm, I'm gonna grab the. Look for that clip. I just seen it where he's in that red shirt. Because from his legs. I don't. Yeah, your yeah your chin. You gotta protect your chin, but technique can protect your chin, right? You you. Not getting hit in the face is as much as you have in good defense and good technique. And looking at his legs when he fights in these moments, his foundation looks as strong as ever. Like, I don't, I don't think it's ever a good idea to uh, go back to a sport that is a, it's a young man's sport at the end of the day. But he might um, fight someone old though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, okay. If he fights someone like, like, there's this other guy who was considered like a Russian Mike Tyson of MMA called a uh, Fedor Emelianenko, I believe his name is. Oh, Sorry Fedor. Yeah, I, 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 I recognize the first name. Yeah, I don't know the last name, but I recognize the first name. Uh, yeah, there's like slight rumors of Mike Tyson fighting Fedor, maybe, but it'll definitely be a factor if it's MMA or boxing. If it's boxing, then yeah, he definitely has the edge over Fedor, and vice versa if it's MMA. But that'll be a good link up. I don't think he should fight anybody young. Like, yeah, he definitely shouldn't fight any spring chickens anytime soon. The thing is, is also is like, what you got to remember when you have that kind of knockout power, though, it's like, it's the equalizer. You know, they gets called that in every sport. When you kind of have that knockout power, they always call it an equalizer because as much as you might be out of it, like, all it takes is that one connect and the match is over. But of course, for his health, for his safety, I don't think anybody would want to see him be in a match where he's just a little outclassed, not necessarily in technique or anything, but just in what the body's capable of, you know what I mean? Being that explosive. But then again, it's like, how do you judge how explosive he is? He might be a superhuman. Do I think LeBron James at Mike Tyson's age is still going to be more healthy and more jacked and more athletic than a lot of younger people yeah you know what i mean i think there's just like superhumans in every sport you know what i'm saying and i know mike tyson feels like he might be a super specimen for boxing lebron sometimes feels like a super specimen for basketball just because it's like i feel like i've been watching him play basketball now since i was in like elementary middle like when did he st it feels like forever wasn't it like right out of college? I mean, right out of high school. Sorry, like yeah. I think he got, wasn't he like literally eighteen or some bullshit? Let me see. I can look this up. We don't have to guess. When AJ in the game for a minute, dude. But yeah, some people were just bred for this shit. Like yeah. if you start off a kid and bec it becomes your obsession, like that's that's the Michael Jordan effect right there. Two thousand and three, brother. Yeah, that's. That's too long. And I don't know, I don't know if he's considered old in basketball years, but he started so young and just skyrocketed from there that he's 35 right now. Oh my god. Well, yeah, that's that's definitely like up there in athlete years maybe, but he it's not like you know, with all this rest that he's having now cuz of COVID, he'll, he'll probably come back like he was himself 2 years ago. And my thing is it's it's hard to say and that's another thing, right? It's like, yeah, old, but I, I feel like it's all all depends on the the genetics, man. Because I think an old for LeBron isn't this going to be the same thing as an old for, for another person. You know what I mean? I feel like I feel like LeBron could still give us a couple years of basketball and still compete in, yep. you know, that kind of highest... And that highest caliber, which is crazy, man. He's been yeah. he he can 
he's almost been a basketball player for two decades. Yeah, that's that's insane. That's got to be a lot on the body. Yeah. Dude looks great though. Fuck. Yeah, thank, thank God he's uh been playing it smart and playing it safe. I, I know think for injuries, but you know, for him to be going as long as he's been doing it, uh, he's been making the right moves. Yeah, I think that's what it is though, too, right? Like you just said, he he's been smart about a lot of his steps. I mean, he's probably had his minor injuries there, but I don't think we've ever seen LeBron just like out for anything too crazy, right? Like, yeah. I don't, I don't I don't think I've seen him do anything like like no publicity stunts, no crazy injuries. Like he's, he's been, been a good dude, yeah. Like an outstanding citizen as well as an athlete, and that's all you can really ask for in a person. I think he's what the NBA would want to be the best, one of the best basketball players. Like as a representation, it's kind of like the whole, you know, not to get too political or anything, but the whole president thing, right? It's who do you want to represent you as a country or who do you want to represent the league or who do you want to represent this? You know what I'm saying? He's a, he's a great representation for what I can imagine the NBA would want, you know, and you know, hopefully he, he, he's around long enough to keep giving us years and years of more basketball, man, because it's always one of those things where it's like you hate to see him go, you know? Yeah. At the same time, I do want all athletes to retire at a reasonable time, you know? Some where they're people, not completely destroyed. Yeah. Some, some people do it till the wheels fall off. Some people do it before they can really get themselves into it. Like, you just got to find that good middle ground. Some people... Um, just love messing their career up on purpose, kind of like John Jones. He's kind of like the opposite of LeBron James, except he is considered the GOAT, but he just keeps fucking inside the octagon that he's not going to be considered a legend at the end of the day. It'll always be in conversation, but he's going to be be like the people's legend, but he's not going to be the statistical legend. Like the stats aren't going to let him be considered one of the greatest fighters. I know there was that one loss he had or whatever from back in the day that everyone was like, oh, that was a bullshit. Like, it, it, it is a bullshit. Uh, he was winning the entire fight, and he just did one illegal elbow. And, like... And he, like, went straight down on the head or some shit, right? Or, like, the back of the head or something. It's called, like, a 12 to 6. So it's yeah. Like elbow contact. Yeah, you got to kind of, like, cut at him. You got to kind of, like, slice at him. You can't, yeah. But he was going to take that L regardless, so he took the default victory, and everyone's saying that, like, oh, yeah, he, that's a technical loss, but in reality, homie's undefeated, all right? Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, even I've, ta- I've heard Joe Rogan speak about it, how he is considers he's he considers him undefeated, too. Like, he's like, oh, that, <laughs> we don't talk about that one here, you know? <laughs> things you got to, like, walk off. There, There's always going to be that bullshit in sports where yeah. uh, there's going to be, like, a bullshit file of a bullshit foul from the ref or yellow card or whatever sport you watch you're gonna be like oh this is bullshit but when it comes to him in the octagon he's he's untouchable yeah when it comes to him outside the octagon is like everything's his fucking kryptonite it's insane yeah yeah like um the fact that he gets into all the trouble that he does it's like flabbergasting what do you think about his whole um his whole in, uh, enhancement issue. Uh, Cause that last situation that happened after the Cormier fight, um, was that proven or was it disproven? The whole, what was it? It was like the fa- a weird steroid that had a weird half life or some shit like that. Yeah, it was like a the the whole thing was like picogram. Everybody was okay, throwing yeah, picograms and shit. Yeah like yeah he got caught with some picograms of like i think it was called estrogen blocker which definitely boosts every- testosterone probably or some crazy shit a lot of people use uh, estrogen blockers as well because i guess everybody technically produces testosterone and estrogen but it's like vastly different compared to what gender uh you like if it's male obviously you're gonna get more testosterone than estrogen but you still kind of develop estrogen in the background yeah especially as you get older i'm pretty sure i'm I'm pretty sure men gain estrogen as they get older and lose start to lose testosterone yeah yeah they started losing muscle mass Mm -hmm. sex drive they started getting man boobs like Mm -hmm. this this shit happens um but yeah so i guess he was caught with and i don't remember everything entirely but i do know what estrogen blockers are um 
And I believe he was caught with some picograms of that in his system. Another mm -hmm. situation was dick pills. Like there was some... uh, Yeah, I heard about the whole dick pill scandal and then the cocaine. <laughs> dick pills, dog, and it had it had some shit in it, and he got in trouble for that. So I do know one of his fights with DC was considered a disqualification, I guess, or a no contest, or however you want to discuss. I think it was like a no contest, yeah. Yeah, but uh, so that victory was taken away from him but without a doubt i yeah. still feel like I've beaten dc as much as i that's love. the thing is though is i even dc was kind of mad at that whole situation of course he would be you know you you, you want to fight fair and square i think that's everyone's goal but you could tell dc was furious in that whole situation the fact that you know he kind of got the belt and then it was like defaulted in a way because of that and then it was like also um but i don't know man i think people always like to bring up oh john jones drug this drug that but if you just look at how he fights is the enhance like i need to know strictly what the enhancements are doing him is it giving him more energy is it making him stronger is it this and is it and is it even 100 percent proven because from what it sounds like is like they let him off after three to six months because he fought again and beat the shit out of the other dude. <laughs> and I and I do think he was whatever fight that he had like the picograms in, uh after that fight, he did another fight and I think that one also caught some picograms, but it was like I think at that point they just let it go. It was just like, Oh yeah, you already you already did your time for that. I guess it's still in your system. This was like so long ago, I wish I had uh, more more clarity. Yeah. It is we're just kind of just painting a picture, but like at the end of the day, like if you just watch any of John Jones fights and watch how he adapts and watch how he analyzes and moves like yeah. there's there's no one who really fights like him like there was one one DC fight and they've had multiple fights so it's hard to remember exactly which one it was but he was squared up with DC they were both on their feet and then he caught DC with like a hill hook or something like that and like just so smooth cuz DC's just so focused on his hands and waiting for like the the leg chop to come in because you know like uh he does a lot of kicks i've noticed um john he jones he kicks a lot with those chicken legs it's a little weird uh <laughs> some things come in like a sword that's why he keeps them small slink. um yeah facts but like he literally hit dc with like a hill hook or like a toe hook or something and clips dc and he oh, falls, yeah. and then he just gong, gong. I was like, but the just, oh, it was yeah, just that. so smooth, though. Like the thing is, the 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 move itself wasn't even that impressive. It was just the timing and the and the wearer thought of like, oh, I got this scoop, scoop, and then like, oh my god, that was definitely very very sad to see because me and a friend were both rooting for. DC because he's such like a nice guy. Yeah, of course. He's he's like the the guy that should be in all the posters because he's such a sweet dude. And you know we we saw him get head kicked and got clipped like that. And we were just like, God damn, like oh, fucking John Joe is just gonna stay the goat. He's like a evil villain. Let him man. be the villain. He's I think he's okay with it too. Just let him be the boogeyman. And he's not doesn't come off as necessarily bad dude. He's just like a. You know, I think he's inserts your average asshole, you know, yeah. he I feel like he does try to hide some of his evil, you know, like he has like that image is like, oh, you know, I'm a very Christian guy. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's all about my team, my coaches and my family. And my then coke. He, yeah. And then he like he gets caught with drugs. He's like T-boning a pregnant lady and fleeing the scene mm -hmm. like that you're was doing, ridiculous. And all this dumb shit. And you're like in top of the world but at the, at the end of the day he he is the youngest ufc champion in the world yeah no that's one can take he, that away from him no yeah. that's why he's like the lebron james of that except he does everything wrong outside of the sport yeah um but you're gonna have those archetypes man you're gonna have those people but those the thing is we don't know if how would john jones be if we take those away right sometimes the vices make the you know what I mean? Like, 
it's hard to say, hey, stop doing all this stuff with when you became the youngest world champion doing all this stuff. Right? I mean, sure, all, the, all those things could be making him who he is, but if it's not if it's kind of like frowned upon and you're not supposed to be doing it like i'm sure t-boning a pregnant lady is not making him the champion of the world no well that aside because that i think that was just yeah that was some criminal shit but like you think like the drugs and the party but like know? the drugs the partying the the kind of getting lit like we heard the stories when michael jordan coming to games kind of turn right um mm -hmm. drawing another parallel um away from fighting is uh damn what was Damn, I drew a blank. I, I had a dope parallel. Like, because, yeah, just the, it's just what, how would he be if we take those away? Like, not saying he needs them, but sometimes people are who they are and those are their strengths. Some Sometimes it's weaknesses, but, you know, it's like, oh, the parallel I was going to draw. Musicians, right? Think about a musician who smokes or does some kind of psychedelic or do, you know something and then creates some of the best music we've ever heard yeah i mean that's a completely different lane it's but a I... parallel though because it's they're still using those kind of things not but the thing is we know the musician does sometimes we just don't know if john uh if uh if johnny bones jones does you know what i mean like is that a part of his his routine or his what levels him you know what i'm saying because there's times in my life where i could say i guess like without video games i might have just been like off of my center i might have not you know graduated on time i might you know sometimes people need that thing that that levels them you know what i mean that that gets them back to zero uh, yeah, but I guess for like a professional fighter, that unfortunately just can't be it. Yeah, see, the the what come what, where the issue lies is the fact that it is a competition sport and it's not artistic, right? It is something that is. It's supposed to be one peak athlete versus another peak athlete. It's not supposed to have any external, you know what I mean? But. You know, we can't return, roll back time. We don't know how John Jones would have been if he never took that, you know, never was coked up or never fucking went and party. And for all we know, John Jones would have been another cliff note in UFC history. You know what I mean? But he is where I mean, he is now. If you look at his background, like all of his brothers are big as shit. Like I think one or two of them are in the NFL. NFL, so yeah. He was always deterred. Like he was always to be some type of athlete, yeah. He was always meant for greatness, like to be raised around like stuff like that. I don't know if his brothers also partook in like the coke and the drinking all the time and the partying, but I, f I feel he would have been fine without it. I think that's yeah. just a leaf stress at the end of the day. I mean, it could just be a symptom of the success, too. It may not have been something he carried along before he became Johnny Bones Jones. Maybe his worth ethic was just that ridiculous that. He's been able to carry himself through all this shit, but ultimately maybe that's something that did just come on later on in his life once he started to get that kind of attention and success, you know? That stuff kills people, you know? Using drugs, I think, is one of the more minimal side effects of having that kind of... <laughs> yeah, no, you, most definitely. You know, some people take the extremes once they start to get that kind of attention and that kind of notoriety and money some people do a whole 180 and destroy destroy their careers one thing at least about john jones is like at least he's kind of can talk like back up his shit talking you know i think that's always what it comes down to like with him and connor yeah they talk shit but at least they can yeah. kind of back it up you know you can't you can't take them lightly no matter what they say. So yeah. it's just like, oh, I'm gonna knock you out in the second round. I'll be like, all right, he might knock me out in the second round. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I might need to watch for that foot. That shit might come out of nowhere and meet the Zohan and just smack me in the chin or some shit. <laughs> Yo, to bring this back full circle, I wonder since he's not 
going to be fighting, or he might be fighting in America, but I'm not entirely sure. Do you think Mike Tyson is under any performance enhancements? Because he looks fucking like he didn't skip a step past the 90s. True. Uh, I think it's a combination of being a, a, a specimen and enhancers. Yeah, I don't think it's... I don't think an average person on enhancers can be where he's at. Yeah, I do know, like, you know, muscle memory is a thing, and you can, like, gain all of mm-hmm. your prime if you just, you know... But I do think it. he probably is taking some testosterone, testosterone enhancers to just kind of get his energy levels back up. And it, I don't think he's... The one thing I don't think he's doing is hurting himself to get to where he's at. He might be training like crazy and doing certain things, but that's stuff he's used to mentally and his body's probably just getting reaccustomed to once he got back in the flow of things. But as far as like, I doubt he's taking anything that would be considered like major in the steroid department. You know what I mean? Or the enhancement department. If he's taking anything, I'm pretty sure it's like, what I would assume is doctor prescribed things for older men. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, but those are those are just accelerated doses of testosterone at the end of the day. Yeah, so. but that's what I'm saying. I, I don't think he's necessarily going and finding like the the outsource shit or like the the like shit you gotta fucking get from out of country. Like he's definitely just going to his doctor and saying, hey. What certain things I can use to, to increase this, 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 and this, and this. And his doctor's probably writing him like a little checklist. You know yeah. what I mean? That he could go pick up at a CVS or some shit. <laughs> he is training with uh, a legendary Brazilian fighter. And I think his camp, um, Vitor Belfort. Oh, and Vitor. Yeah, yeah. Vitor Belfort. Yeah. He, was, he was very known. For, for, some, for some juice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. As, uh, they used to call him TR Titor. Yeah. <laughs> Jacked. And for those of you who don't know what TRT is, it's basically testosterone replacement therapy. And uh, yeah, you, <laughs> you just get ju- up, juice like, to the gills, bro. You, your neck is up here. <laughs> traps mid ear to shoulder, just uh, looking like Bane. Vitor yeah, Belfort, dude. Yeah. yeah. Vitor Belfort. Well, yeah, he's probably doing some type of testosterone therapy. I wouldn't doubt it. But also, again, if the organization doesn't frown upon it and he's staying within the dosage limits to not hurt himself physically, I don't think there's a problem with it. Like, yeah, I mean, I'm just saying he's hanging around the right crowd if he's trying to get boost up. It's like if you're getting mad, like if if anyone's getting mad at like Mike Tyson for using TRT, it's like you should be mad at a lot of other people for altering how they actually look. Yeah. You know what I mean? Compared to just improving yourself or altering yourself. You know what I'm saying? I think. No, because if you think about it, he's it's kind of like he's giving himself a boost. So like when you're taking testosterone throughout training. It, that basically means less strain on the body, quicker recovery, like full recovery. Mm-hmm. So you can just keep doing that over and over and over. Meanwhile, the same your opponent is doing the same exact things you're doing, but he's just having more wear and tear. It's harder for him to recover. No, 100%. Not percent have as many results. So you're kind of risking you're kind of risking your life because someone is illegally, if it's illegal, juicing themselves up to murder you in a cage and get paid for it no but that's what i'm saying if the league if whatever whatever organization he's fighting at or his next fight's gonna be at if trust me if he knows they don't mind that stuff then his opponent knows they don't mind that stuff and athletes are always gonna do what they need to do to hit that peak so i have no doubt in my mind his opponent is also gonna be using whatever top of the line stuff but i'm saying like in the spectrum of human enhancement as far as where we are now i think i would prefer to take something that just increases my body's actions versus doing something that just physically alters my body action you know what i mean like i would rather take a steroid and work out for six months to a year and look jack than to get pec implants and Ab uh, implants and yeah, yeah. Sure. illusion. Yeah, you know but, what I'm saying? Like, 
So in the spectrum of body altering, like I don't really see like an issue. Like you can even like even Joe Rogan's on certain testosterone stuff, and like if people aren't like, if your field isn't like professional with, like USADA overwatching it, most of those people are doing whatever they want to hit their, hit their peak. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I mean, yeah, if you're not in a professional sport, yeah, there's no reason to frown upon dudes who want to take more testosterone and just have that build, you know? Bro, like, have you seen those guys that look my size and they're injecting, like, liquid into their arms and shit to make fake? Like, it's like... Disgusting. It's like a like, pimple that needs to pop on their shit or something, dude. Dude, do you want, like, fake, like pillow pecs like on your chest knowing that you're that's not going to help your performance like you can't even do a push-up and the weird thing is is they still work out with that stuff and it's like you're not going to look normal ever dog that shit's gross it it's looks nasty to- and i shame on y'all <laughs> it's like you- at least i feel like girls have a one-up in this area because girls aren't just getting implants anymore they're doing like fat transfers and moving body parts around into other body parts so it's a little different it's like your ass has fat in it so you're just putting fat from other areas into that your ass to make it more fatty my thing is what girls have to realize with that is that's not where the work ends yeah there's girls that are pulling it off really well because they know they're shaping the rest of their body to match now their additional butt cheek like there's a lot of girls out there they'll do the butt cheek thing and just completely skip leg day for the next seven years oh that's the saddest shit i see every time i see it it's just like oh yeah it it looks like a pee it's like a butt and (laughs) it's like a blow pop it's just like stick and then a a cheek they're just like what the fuck is that it's all about balance man and like I don't frown upon a lot of that stuff as long as people are being safe because who am I to tell you what to do with your body? I'm not going to let you tell me what to do with mine, right? Like, that's just kind of, you know, like, I'm not going to tell you not to do that because if you tell me not to do something and I want to do it, I'm going to do it. So it's yeah. I just kind of let it be what it is. But, like... Just no, we don't like fake ass. Yeah. And there needs to be a balance. Like, don't OD with the fake. Like, at least make it seem natural and maybe the doctor's a lot that plays a lot into it maybe the doctor's fault but um silicone ain't the way to go no more like people ain't putting plastic in their butt cheeks no more people's not putting plastic in the boobs no more people are just putting more fat in those areas um working out and the thing is is like between i don't know man it's just we're we're in like I feel like we're in an alternate reality, dude, sometimes. Because it's like, what's important really seems like it shouldn't be what's important. You know what I mean? I mean, I feel like that's just an upbringing thing. Oh, like well. Surrounded by people who just love attention. And, and vanity. And need to gain compliments and always has to look good and just be cherished and like looked at. Yeah, you're going to become like a, a personality on a social media site and you're going to want to keep augmenting your body because you feel like you're not good enough yeah it's never gonna end and there's always those those like fucking 60 for 60 or whatever those 60 like you know those doc things where it's like oh did she go too far and then they they fucking pan or skip cut to the chick and she looks like a fucking barbie doll or an alien like there's no way like there has, I think there has to be a, a mental disorder or something, right? Where you just don't feel comfortable in the way you look to change yourself so drastically that she no longer looked like a person. Yeah, that might, I think it's like when you get a tattoo, you're just like, oh, this is so dope. I gotta, I can't wait for another one. That's gotta be it for like plastic surgery. You're just like, oh my God, I got my cheeks done. I just but got there my- has to be a stop, right? Like, I think, are you... Maybe it's an addiction thing too. Maybe it comes down to like, are you like, how are you with addiction? Is are you the type of person that can do something and choose not to do it the next day and you won't do it, or are you like compelled to do certain things? Because man, I've seen ones where 
chick has like no face skin her chin jaw is just like protruding like nose looks like it's michael jackson's nose but worse you know what i mean like lips are bigger than her whole face almost kind of thing is like what's your vision of beauty versus what like i guess it's all perspective which is what sucks about it's all whoever's perspective of perception of what something is but like damn I hope you find someone that finds you beautiful, dog. Like, yeah, I mean, not even that. Just, just find happiness. I don't know. I if guess that's, that's your pursuit of happiness. Just collect all the fakery as you can in your body, or you know, some people, some people find that beautiful. Some people will just look at someone who's just had nothing but a hundred plastic surgeries and be like, "Wow, you are killing it." If you're like the ideal man or woman that I expected, and. You know, they're, yeah, and they're also out of an incubation fucking chamber, and they're also not what your kid is gonna look like anymore, and they're yeah. also not, you know, genetics are still a thing, you know, it's so crazy. Yeah, I always thought about that because I was just like, wow, Kanye's with Kim, but Kim did not look like that as a teen or a kid or anything like that. So, with original Kim Kardashian face and Kanye face, I'm I'm afraid for that baby. I'm being real. No. <laughs> I was, but luckily they have some gorgeous children hey, but yeah, the thing is i think we i think with what the standard is today we underestimate what ha- the looks were then you know what i mean because i feel like the standard of what gorgeous or beautiful is every year just gets re- more ridiculous and more ridiculous it's like if your ass isn't eight sizes too big and your waist if i can't hold your waist here like I feel like that expectation of beauty just changes so fast and it's getting drastic and drastic. But like, I don't think Kim was ugly. She definitely wasn't as like, she Pam. She just wasn't necessarily pampered. Maybe like she wasn't just makeup all the time. She might've been a little stressed because she was working regular jobs and shit. But like, yeah. it's not like she was like a ugly chick. Like I'm talking even pre Ray J maybe. Right. Like, she looked yeah. regular. She wasn't like drop dead like she was now. She was definitely an attractive female. She just needed to get like her eyebrows done. Her hair yeah, done. right. She just needed to kind of clean up. It wasn't like she was crusty, busty, and dusty. Obviously, she probably got some lip shit done now. Noses tweak a little bit. Jaws yeah. tweaked a little bit. But at the end of the day, I kind of knew. And, and Kanye is not an ugly looking dude. I mean, since his car accident, his mouth looked a little funny. But like. He's a he pretty just, like, average looking dude. A mean face all the time, so it just makes him look less. It's those, and then you catch those moments of him just like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, they got some. They got some cute babies. I'm worried about Kylie a little bit. Um. Oh yeah, she had no lips back in the day, and now she has. She all looks lips. completely different now. Yeah, she's way more different compared. To I her think eyes. Kendall's the only one that has kind of stayed the course she might have had stuff done i don't pay that much attention to the kardashian family but she's the only one that kind of looks like a a a white girl yeah i mean i would i would say the same thing for uh for kylie except you know obviously the lips are just bigger than usual her butt's not real anymore i don't think like i mean who am i to say what's real and what's fake you know? yeah if it feels like fat it must be fat <laughs> real for you then it's real now nah, see when i've touched butt i like to be able to like ooh, that's nice i don't want to like touch a butt and be like Ugh. like you know like a fight in me for the squeeze like i want to be able to get a handful and grab a handful i don't want to like have to karate chop the ass you know what i'm saying <laughs> and break a piece off i don't want ass that resists yeah you know what I'm saying? i want to and at the end of the day we just want you guys to love you for you, you know? yeah i think that's what it is right try to find even if you don't like all of you i don't think anyone on the planet likes all of them Uh, There's definitely parts of me that I despise. Yeah, like, I don't like all of me. He doesn't like all of him. I'm sure our relative, like, but you got to find something you do like in yourself. You know, I think once you kind of find some things you do like in yourself, that's when you start to just build confidence and 
you start to focus on those things and revolve it like you know it's it, yeah it's not i don't know man sometimes i think plastic surgery and all that kind of stuff should be the last the last resort yeah well i i guess it is now because ain't no one getting plastic surgery right now uh, yeah because covid i feel like it's the like i feel like it's it's still a lot of people's first options when they start to feel like they don't like themselves they oh let me change this or change this like maybe change something instead of just going straight to wanting to change something physical maybe change one of your habits first maybe something you're doing is affecting how you're looking at yourself you know what i mean maybe it doesn't have to do with what you actually look like maybe it has to do with how you're performing you know i know there was a time like in my life cycle of jobs, I knew early that I, I, I wasn't going to like the grind. You know what I mean? Of just the nine to five. I would rather grind, create, and develop stuff for people to then reciprocate. You know what I mean? That's always kind of been my thing. So it's like I knew early that that grind wasn't for me. And it's kind of just like fine. plastic surgery is still going since it's pri- in a private hospital. Oh, really people just don't know when to stop but that's the thing I, you really need to find something you appreciate about yourself man because getting caught up too much on on outward opinions and and um things like that it just you, you end up putting too much energy into into external things going on man it's Definitely reflecting and being internal. Plastic surgery still going on. Just did a whole project on it. Oh, damn. Damn, she knows her shit then. Yeah, facts. But. Um, it's. Look, at the end of the day, you got to do you. I don't know if we mentioned that already. Yeah, gotta, yeah. But shake. I think health should also be like on top of that list. Like if doing you compromises your health, where's the line, right? If like. What if doing me is setting myself on fire? I mean, then doing you is stupid. And right? I know, but where's the line? <laughs> right? Like, I think, what if plastic, hear me out. What if plastic surgery was only limited for medical purposes? Right? Like, let's say you, because I know you need plastic surgery. Like, let's say you have a burn accident. A lot of times they do plastic surgery to do skin grafts to to give you new skin in those burnt areas. Or let's say you were born with a with a deformation that plastic surgery may be able to help you with, right? I think in those instances, plastic surgery should be and is a great valid choice to improve people's quality of life. But if you're just a regular ass person, like I think you need to go through I think they need to let people see psychiatrist or therapist or whichever one's the right term for it before they do that stuff. Really? Because I think they should do that before you get to purchase a gun. No, exactly. I agree with that too. Before, I believe you need psych exams before you become a cop, before you purchase a gun, uh, before you do plastic surgery. There's just certain things that I feel like can have more of a detriment on yourself even true i mean i could i could definitely agree with uh the skin grafts um there are stories that i hear like women who are, who just have too much chest going on and it need- causes medical issues for their backs and um but yeah for those who just want to keep getting botox and liposuction and change like their hips and like that's just you you just don't like who you came out as and yeah. there's nothing bad either because some people could come out with a like you could come out gay you could come out saying that you're a boy in a in a girl's body and vice versa and we have to accept that as well it's just like you you feel like you weren't you don't like the cards you were dealt for sure right and uh, we got a chime in here. It's called BDD, body uh, dysmorphic disorder. I have heard that before. I just didn't pull that. That didn't pull up when I was thinking. But um, but yeah, I agree with that though. But what I'm saying is, to as a precursor, those people should get psych tests, right? Because if you're meant, if you're literally 
struggling to perform daily tasks because of how you are feeling so deeply about something, uh, a therapist or whoever would do that kind of test would see that and then apply this as a prescription in a sense. You probably still have to pay for it because it's still a fucking surgery and it's a big, a big surgery. But like, at least then it wouldn't be any just on whims or anything like that. Or if they see that it is a mental health disorder, maybe there's other ways they can help treat that that don't require you chopping and screwing up your whole body. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, one, the doctors, I'm sure, love the money <laughs> that the rich folk are giving them to change their bodies. Uh, and two, as the person who just wants to say, fuck it, let's do it, they have the financial cushion. So, you know, that's just how it is. People who are... Maybe it should just be a healthcare provided thing, right? Only through the medical system. I don't know. I just think there does need to be a couple limitations on certain things. And I'm saying this for for people's well-being. Not even because I don't... I, there's nothing in my body that I feel the itch to change anything. Yeah. I'm very much of this was the cards I was dealt kind of person. Let me do what I can with what I have. Um, yeah. Who know? I guess who knows when I if I ever come into money, how if that opinion of mine might change. But with me with no money right now have a lot of flaws and I'm like, I'm OK. You know what I'm saying? Give you money because it's going to go straight to butt shots. And then you're going to get. You're gonna act like you like you're gonna act like you're the shit like you like your shit don't stink. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like I don't know, I might need a couple inches. Yeah, that's the first. No, let me stop. <laughs> oh my god, God forbid, man. I'm, I don't I'm, even know if that's an actual. Can you even do that? Like that sounds so dangerous. I'm so sure you can, because you can do it to anybody. Yeah, that like, just sounds too dangerous. The most I might do as I get older is help with my hair because my hair isn't as thick as it used to be. But other than that, I don't think like, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't need juicy lips. I don't need a smaller nose. My big ass nose is okay. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I agree. I, I don't think, if anything, I just need to work out more. But if I had the money, I'm not just going to lay down in a bed and have a liposuction or something. Yeah, like that. yeah. I think I think people's taking that convenience thing a little too far. You know, <laughs> like, oh, you could just get it sucked out. <laughs> yeah, like you could get raised with a silver spoon and then end up like Donald Trump where you think the world is yours. And like, who cares what sacrifices? It doesn't it doesn't matter because it doesn't involve you and you're just going to win because you were raised a rich winner. I have a small loan of a million dollars, which I was able to use to fail my first a billion businesses and find I, the right one. I, I don't understand a small loan of a million dollars. Like you can do you can do everything with a million dollars. That's how I, you know some people are just that disconnected to the general state of the United States, right? Like. You can put a bunch of blocks together and they don't have as much money as certain people. Like, yeah. we're so imbalanced, man. Hold on. I think she's trying to say don't get your dick enlarged. Long story short in the chat. <laughs> Please stop. Your wife's in the chat. <laughs> don't worry, baby. We're, neither of us are changing anything about each other. We're good. <laughs> I'll tell you, yeah. and Carla can't just always jump in the chat and... As soon as you talk about getting bigger dicks, you just got Yeah, kinda... where'd she even come from? She was like, oh, what? <laughs> How much the down payment on that one? <laughs> A bigger dick if we want to. <laughs> but no, nah, like genuinely, like I I'm not a perfect human. I have my flaws, but I think part of the human experience is learning to to persevere in the in light of those laws you know what i mean i feel like you really are skipping part of the human experience when you kind of take shortcuts to everything yeah i mean people are slowly and slowly like not accepting um 
what's the word I'm looking for? Adversity. Yeah. People don't want to struggle. People just want, I, I just want to get to the finish line without starting the race. I just yeah. want to jump forward to the finish line. And if that means working out versus just paying some money to get the fat sucked out of me, a lot of people just take that option. Yeah. And I mean, if there's a more convenient option that doesn't involve, like there was this one thing I seen this girl doing on Graham that I was like, what the heck? She went to one of those body studios and they put something around her that basically simulated her doing a ton of crunches in less time than she would have done those crunches, right? It's like a bigger version of those old school belts that used to get released that was like, oh, put this belt on and it'll shock your stomach. And your stomach will just like, you know, like kind of work your abs out and shit like that. It's trying to emulate the wear and tear. Yeah, yeah, the- and the and the and the constant compressions, right? Mm-hmm. Even sometimes though, I look at those things and I'm like, is that really doing it for you? The way you know what I'm saying? You're not, you're, you're sitting there and your abs are compressing. You're not hitting any of that range of motion. There's no. I feel like that bend that happens, man, it's just everybody looks for shortcuts. And I feel like we're just going to end up in a society of like half done things. You know what I mean? I mean, all that's it's got to be for image. I doubt it benefits you performance wise, like like that beneficially. Yeah, yeah, it's just off for show. I think that just inflates the muscles, just has more blood in them. But if you do the same amount of crunches and then do that bullshit strap electric thing and then yeah. you try to, again you're not going to do that many more yeah so so biofreeze makes your stomach smaller i think you know a little bit too much about this stuff i hope you know you ain't doing none of this shit we talking about <laughs> brother you need a podcast you need to talk about some yeah facts what you to biofreeze I... scale a phd you ain't getting none of this stuff done that we talking about i'm just saying it now <laughs> please and- He's getting a dick job. It's official. <laughs> and I'm getting bigger calves. And tits. <laughs> I'm going to walk around looking like Frieza. <laughs> Shoulders is going to be out. <laughs> Except you're going to have flowy hair because you're going to get your hair done too. Oh my God. Get some extensions, bro. That Fabio. Get some, get some dreads back. Um. But yeah, man. I just... It's kind of crazy being a bystander through through all of this. <laughs> she about to jump through that camera. <laughs> it's kind of crazy being a bystander through a lot of stuff going on right now. Because I just, I guess I can't, I try to empathize in a lot of situations, but I can't empathize on preferring appearance over performance, I guess, right? Like, if I'm doing anything physical, it's because I want to be at peak performance, like I want my body to last long. I want to just live as long as possible kind of thing. It's not for something as as like as minuscule or just to what I see as not as important as just how you look. Yeah, I don't know. I I can't I can't agree with anyone that has the do it for the gram mentality. Yeah, yeah, right. That's kind of, that's a good way to put it. Do it for the gram. <laughs> You got to look good in front of the camera. If you're like those those people that live religiously via like selfies, then yeah, I feel like that's a mental disorder. Because yeah. <laughs> you can have all the eyes on you. I don't know what that's going to complete. If it, if it benefits you financially, then sure, why not? But if you're trying to get something emotional or like feel the need of being appreciated, that's, that's the wrong place, B. Yeah, I agree. Um, I mean... Yeah, it's just, I guess that's what happens. I I really do believe there's a flavor of chip out there for everybody. I think some people might take a little longer to find their right flavor than others. Like I've been in relationships that I consider complete trash. You know what I'm saying? That led me to be now in one that I, I, you know, I enjoy and, and I appreciate. Right. And then I've also been in ones in the past that weren't bad, but you know situations cause differences and things cause differences so there was fallouts you know it's there's a flavor of chip for everyone it's just some people don't have the patience to for trial and error Mm -hmm. to find their right flavor you know what i mean 
Yeah, it's a it's a mix between like patience and tolerance. I would want to say. Yeah. Like that could be for anything. It's whether you want to get your dream career or just get something done or meet somebody or be something. Like yeah. it, it is. Yeah, I I don't know how else to to say it. Yeah. Um, it, you just need to find your flavor chip. <laughs> and so many delicious chips, dude. Yeah, there's so many delicious chips out there, but yeah. you gotta find the one that you like for the rest of your life. Yeah, and one that uh likes you. You know, it's a, it's a and and again too something that I kind of want to end on because we have uh kind of gone over a two hour mark. I think. Um, yeah we're good for today but what i kind of want to end on in a good note a high note that i do think love is a choice it's not just the feeling you get i think the feeling you get kind of sets you up for the choice right that initial feeling you get kind of puts you in a mind space where you're like okay um you know whether the person is the right fit for you and sometimes the 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 person just like you isn't the right fit for you sometimes you need a different person right but if once you find the person that kind of made you feel that initial feeling, you then have to continue to decide and choose to love that person because there's so many ups and downs and changes that people go through in life that that person that you fell in love with that just physical kind of giddy way initially isn't going to be the same person you're with five years down the road absolutely so yeah. you really have to every step of the way choose whether you're going to continue to love the person or not and make the choice like for me i'm, I'm a big like oh man i don't want to fail in that area so it's like when i make my choice to love someone i really kind of put the effort in you know what i mean i don't take that decision lightly so i think once i think people are disconnecting that just oh my heart aches for the person and the conscious decision to be like, I want to be with this person. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people have, um, and I'm also one of those people, they have a hard separation of like that puppy dog phase, like that you're, that you're talking about, like that mm -hmm. cup, you guys meet each other and you guys can't help but want to be by each other 24 seven. And mm -hmm. it's like, like, Oh my God, you start throwing soulmate around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which is a good word, but yes. <laughs> yeah, like I, I have my, my ups and downs with that word. Um, <laughs> if we're being completely honest. But were they though? <laughs> like that's the... <laughs> don't throw that word around to every chick, but it's just no. like, you know, it, it's happened not more than once that I thought it was like a thing, but... And who said your soul can't have more than one mate? Oh my God. that's the... See, that's why I keep you around, dog. I need... <laughs> that's so... The... Once. Give you know what I'm saying? I think people people uh, put too much pressure on themselves to to do everything like perfect the first try. You know what I mean? Or like get everything, hit all the right notes on the first try. You know what I mean? That you might have you might have run across a couple soulmates. You know what I'm saying? They might have, and soulmates don't always. I think you can have, and this is something Carla kind of even I think brought up to me if I remember is like. You can have a soulmate that's your friend, right? But you guys are that connected that that's your soulmate, but it's a friendship versus yeah. a soulmate that is an intimate one or a soulmate that's, you know what I'm saying? I think there can be different labels. You know what I'm saying? It can mean multiple different things, um, but everybody just assumes that when you say soulmate it's just like that's the person i'm going to be with for the rest, the rest of, my, of life. my life yeah only been with them for like two months and you think you're already throwing the l word around like that's why it's just scary like of course when you're younger and we are going to wrap up i do know i'm, I'm kind of no we're good dude i was just checking because i noticed you tagged me in that thing but yeah for sure um but it gets kind of lost in translation. Like we've all been in that stage where you meet that someone and you're just like, you're just high off of them mm -hmm. and they can become addicting and you treat them like a drug and you just want to be with them. You need to be with them. Da, 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 da. And then once, you know, you, you do pass that time where it's just like, all right, well, we've had a couple 
things here and there and it's kind of like we we get it we're, we're together and we're not going to always be cutesy and stuff like that and then that's when you start seeing flaws and then like people get distant whether it's one side or both sides it's just like the blindness that that cupcake phase that puppy dog phase gives you is just like bright as shit yeah it's it, it's just like a drug because you don't want it to end and then once it does end you're just like shattered you're just like a shell of a person and that's kind of where again full circle leads back where to what i was saying you have to choose it right because once the puppy dog phase is over and you do see the certain flaws that's when you then choose okay i now see this person through the right lens is this still the person i will choose to love and choose and continue to because choosing to love someone is accepting the good and the bad i think that's kind of unanimous for most what most people understand and is it's not oh i love you so you have to be my perfect image of whatever it's how it's like knowing that you and i don't like the word perfect i think it's gross but <laughs> um because i don't think anyone's perfect i don't think anything is perfect um but you just got to find that person that you're willing to to commit and uh, make the choice you know i think it's all about choices whole life is choices this is the perfect spot to leave it i just want to say if you've enjoyed the content up till now always feel free to drop a like and comment and subscribe to our youtube channel uh where you'll get clips snippets um you know you'll find out when we go live uh follow all our socials so you can keep in contact with us and follow us on twitch so you can actually catch the live shows bomb bomb you know what it is cloudy he is true renegade Hit us up on the socials, like he mentioned, Patreon, YouTube, Instagram, Twitch, SoundCloud, Reddit, Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, Discord, your mom's house. We are there, dog. We about to tell her some of that lovey-dovey shit, too. You already know. Swing. <laughs> uh, we love you. Till next time. Fuck, 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 fu